Selamat datang di CST Cornerstone Tabernacle. Hai semua umat pemenang. Sungguh, hanya kerana anugerah dan kemurahan Tuhan saja, setiap kita tetap ada dalam tudung Tuhan. Sebab kita percaya, nothing is impossible with God.
Shalom jemaat Tuhan yang dikasihi Ini waktunya untuk kita memberi Di screen ada tertera nomor ekon Bank Gereja untuk setiap jemaat uh, Boleh transfer secara online Saya bacakan kita satu firman Tuhan Dalam 2 Korintus pasal 9 ayat 8 Dan Allah sanggup melimpahkan segala kasih karunia kepada kamu Supaya kamu senantiasa berkecukupan di dalam segala sesuatu Dan malah berkelebihan di dalam pelbagai kebajikan Mari kita siapkan pemberian yang terbaik bagi Tuhan Karena ia pasti menyediakan dan membuka pintu-pintu berkat Bagi setiap kita yang sungguh-sungguh memberi dan percaya kepadanya Mari saja kita berdoa bersama Bapak di surga kami naikkan doa syukur Dan juga pemberian kami ini kepadamu Biarlah kiranya namamu yang ditinggikan Dimuliakan lewat pemberian yang akan memberikan Tuhan Hanya di dalam nama Tuhan Yesus kami berdoa Amin My dear friends at Cornerstone Tabernacle Church, it's a joy and privilege to share the Word of God with you. I'm going to share a word from Acts chapter 2, particularly from verse 40, where Peter says, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. But before that, I would like to say something and especially addressing families. You know, during this MCO, I found two fundamental foundations remain. Number one, the individual. Number two, the family unit. And so as I speak today's message, I want to speak to the fathers and mothers in every family, you know, because you hold the key. Because God moves through families. And what I'm about to share with you is something that you need to look at how you can have the presence of God, the Word of God, the power of God, and the purpose of God work in and through family. And so I pray that you pay close attention to what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you uh, this morning. Let us begin. I've entitled my message, Save Yourselves from This Corrupt Generation. Now, Acts 2.40 indicates that the apostle continued to share the word and urge the people to put their trust in Christ Jesus. And he said, be free from this untoward generation, this unbelieving Jews, this perverse and obstinate uh, generation, because they were walking contrary to God and man, wedded to sin and marked for ruin. And amongst those people, Peter stands up and says, save yourselves from this corrupt and perverse generation by putting your trust in Jesus Christ. This is the message that I want to bring 
to you this morning. Let us save ourselves from this corrupt and perverse generation that is walking contrary to the ways of God by putting our trust in Jesus Christ. Of course, this comes out of Acts chapter 2. And so let's read that portion of scripture. Acts chapter 2, and I want to read from verse 21, but move on straight to verse 36 and to verse uh, 47. Acts 2, verse 21. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Verse 40. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Let's pray. Lord, we come this morning together as a company of your people and as families especially. We present ourselves to you that you may open our hearts, that we may listen to your voice and that we may change to obey you. That we be a people of God with Christ in our midst because we have put our trust fully and wholly in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Messiah. In his precious name we pray. Amen. So the question is, how do we save ourselves? Acts 2.40, with many other words, Peter warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. You know, elsewhere in the New Testament, especially in Hebrews, he says, see to it brothers that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living god now how do we ensure that we as a company of a people or even as a family that none of us would have a sinful unbelieving heart and that would turn away from the living god how do we do that how do we encourage one another daily so that none of us may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know what sin does? Sin deadens our ears and blinds our eyes and hardens our hearts. But how do we save ourselves from this sin's deceitfulness? You know, Paul, writing to the Philippians, he said that we may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in the midst of a warped and a crooked generation. And the result is that we will shine among them like stars in the sky. What are we saying? The point of this passage is this. We save ourselves from this corrupt generation so that we will shine among the people like stars in the sky for the glory of God. But how do we do this? Well, the first thing is, we need to hear the gospel. We need to know the gospel. Not only uh, to hear the gospel, we need to hear the gospel. You know, in verse 21 of Acts chapter 2, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In verse 36, therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Jesus is more than a prophet, yeah? I know you would hear friends and or quarters of people who say, oh, Jesus is a prophet. But here is a verse that says, Jesus is more than a prophet. He is both Lord and Messiah. You know, it says here that the apostles, as they continue to share the word and urge the people to put their trust in Jesus Christ, they were saying, free yourselves from this 
untoward generation, perverse, unbelieving Jews. How? By putting our trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came clothed with the gospel. You cannot describe Jesus Christ apart from the gospel. And you need to know these five points of the gospel. And I'm sure in your church, we have shared this already and you already know the five points of the gospel. Grace, man, God, Christ, faith. So we know this gospel already. But just to summarize it, let me just say this. If my left hand represents man, and if my right hand represents God, God wants to give us this gift of eternal life. That is great. He wants to give us this gift of eternal life, which we don't deserve and we don't earn it. But God wants to give us. But something is blocking from receiving this, and that is sin. And assuming if this represents sin, sin has separated us from a holy God. God is merciful. He doesn't want to punish us. But at the same time, God is a God of justice. He must punish us for our sins. So what did God do? This is indeed a dilemma. How can God demonstrate his love at the same time justice? He did that through self-sacrifice. He sacrificed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God who became man. He's at the same level. He brought himself to the same level as man. The only difference is that we are sinful, but he is without sin. And God laid all our sins on Jesus Christ. He who had no sin became sin on our behalf, so that in him we become the righteousness of God. Jesus Christ took all our sins to the cross and paid that penalty of our sins by dying there on the cross. And before he died, he said, it is finished, meaning he had paid the penalty of our sins once and for all. He died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day and then ascended to heaven and now offers us this forgiveness of sins and this gift of eternal life. And nothing is blocking us from receiving this gift, which we can receive by faith. That is the gospel in short, in brief. But we need to know the gospel. And I'm sure in your church that they are training you on how to uh, share this gospel. So we need to hear the gospel first. Because when we hear the gospel, then, as just the people then in Acts chapter 2, as they heard the gospel, they said, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied in Acts uh, 2 verse 38, the first thing that Peter said was, repent. Peter told them how to be saved. They had to repent of their sins and believe on Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. No, by repentance we mean that we acknowledge our sin to God and the willingness to turn from it. That's what repentance means. It means to turn from sin and turn to God. Now, according to Matthew Henry, Repentance must involve both the change of mind and change of action. A change of mind demands a change of action. He went on to say, repentance is necessary to prevent a sinner's ruin. If we want to save ourselves from this corrupt generation, we need to repent. We need to turn away from sin and turn to God. So we repent of our sins. We also repent of who Jesus is. We have to change our minds of who Jesus is. He is not just a prophet. He is not just a teacher. He is God. And He is our Lord and Messiah. And so the first thing is to repent. The second thing is to believe. Is to believe. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God who became man. And what did He do? He died on the cross rose from the dead to pay the penalty of our sins and to purchase a place in heaven for us. Eternal life. And we can receive this gift of eternal life through saving faith. What is this faith? This faith is not blind faith. This faith is not hate knowledge only. This faith is not temporary faith. This faith is knowing and trusting in Jesus alone as Lord and Savior 
for our eternal life. So we need to repent, believe, and then receive. Receive this forgiveness of sins. Receive this eternal, eternal life. And we give proof of the sincerity of our repentance and receiving this eternal life and receiving this forgiveness of sins. Give proof of our faith by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage some of us here who have not been water baptized, please, that is proof of our sincerity of our repentance and belief in Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, identifying ourselves publicly with Christ as our Lord and Savior. It is only by repenting and believing on Christ could we receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. And this promise is for both Jews and the power of Gentiles. There is a very interesting verse in verse 39. It says, all whom the Lord our God will call. And I felt that is a, a great prayer that we can pray for our unsafe friends and relatives and colleagues. Lord, call these dear ones who are lost to yourself. That they might hear the gospel. That they might repent of their sins. That they might believe on Jesus Christ. That they might receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life and be baptized in his name. Wow. Lord, call these dear people to yourself. That they might hear the gospel. Wow. Very powerful prayer. So receive. And so we see in verse 41. When verse 41, it says, Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 and all. So, coming back to the question, how do we save ourselves from this corrupt generation? How do we begin? Well, in response to the gospel, we repent, believe, and receive. And that's what exactly they did. Right? They heard the gospel, they repented, they believed, and they were baptized. And so that's how it begins, but it doesn't stop there. We need to continue. <laughs> we need to continue. And that is how we continue. We continue in the life of Christ. Here in verse 42, Acts 2, 42, it says, they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread now this is very interesting now just for a moment i want you to pause and look at the great commission now there jesus said therefore having gone forth make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and by teaching them to obey everything i've commanded you so the process of making disciples then is accomplished here in at least at least two steps uh, baptizing them and then teaching them teaching them doctrine how do we grow in this life of Christ yes we begin in the life of Christ by hearing the gospel repenting believing receiving and being baptized but how do we grow into this life of Christ and therefore continue to remain saved from this corrupt uh, generation we first of all uh, give ourselves to the apostles doctrine the word of God number two to fellowship with one another and with God number three breaking of bread and number four prayers I, I want to say this my friends I know as churches we have also ordained uh, the sacraments and we say we break bread in the church but I want to say this MCO has actually brought us back to this the book of Acts. We break bread at home. <laughs> Why should we stop it? Why should we stop it? Now I want to say this. Ever since the MCO started, and uh, we started practicing Acts 2 42 in our home, especially every Sunday, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., the one hour, we started. You know, the breaking of bread signifies the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his second coming. It also opens up that space for us to confess and repent our sins and get right. So, oh, 
So how do we save ourselves uh, from this corrupt generation? Not only that we believe and get baptized, but we continue in God's word, in fellowship with one another. I'm talking about families now, and uh, in the in the breaking of bread and in prayer, praying for one another. This is very very powerful. And not only we we confine ourselves just um, uh, to the to, to to prayers. You know, I want to make a statement that you know God moves through families. If you look at the Old Testament, uh, no family is perfect. Eh? Yeah, we don't have a perfect family, but God moves through families. Look at Abraham's family. Abraham wasn't perfect. His family wasn't perfect, but uh, God moved in his family. Isaac, Jacob. God moved in their families because there was one in the family who decided to connect and move with God. And if you watch all these families, and both in Old Testament and New Testament, all things, there is the Word of God, His Word, number two, there is His presence, there is His power, the acts of God, and then there is purpose. Now, how do these things all apply in the New Testament? Well, Acts 2 42, is it? Acts 42. Acts 2, 42 to 47 captures all the four. The word, his presence, his power, and his purpose. And so, it is not just the four things, but also in verse 43 we read, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now in the New Testament especially, many of the miracles that were done were, were healing miracles. That means this. We pray for the sick, whether it is within our family or whether with uh, people whom we know, we pray for the families and we see miracles happening. We pray for the sick as well. Then we move on. We also show kindness to one another. We help one another. We give to the poor and needy in Acts 2 verses 44 to 45. It says here, now all who believe were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Give to the poor and needy. I'm talking out of families, yeah. I'm giving out of the family. So not only that, they, they all gathered together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided among them all as anyone had need. It's the same, helping one another and sharing with one another. And of course, they continue day by day in the family. There is praise, there is both joy, there is worship, there is community, and Christ in our midst. Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. God was in their midst. And what happened? You see in Acts 2 47. Acts 2.47 And the Lord added to that number daily those who were being saved. What do you think is happening? They were proclaiming Christ. They were sharing the gospel. That's why it is so important for you to know the gospel. They were sharing the gospel. And, and, it, and, and out of sharing the gospel, they knew what to share of the gospel and who to share the gospel. And all that they see God adding to their number daily. This out of families, you out of heaven. And I pray this is the way for us to move forward, to save ourselves from this corrupt generation, and at the same time, plugging in into God's Word, into His presence, plugging into His power, into His purpose, as we move on during times such as this. May God bless you. I want to pray for all the families this morning as we end. And I pray you will catch the spirit of Acts 2, 42 to 47. If every family begins to do Acts 2, 42 to 47, and you encourage other families, the revival will break up. So I want to pray for families. Even though you may not have your own family, but you pray that this will come into your family. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I bring every family represented here at Cornerstone Tabernacle Church. And may they catch hold of their spirit. Catch hold of the spirit of Acts 2, 42, 47. 
and may they begin family by family begin to experience your word in their midst begin to experience your fellowship your presence in their midst begin to experience your power in their midst begin to experience the death and resurrection the second coming of Christ through the breaking of bread begin to experience through prayer your power your purpose and as they proclaim the gospel lord the gospel will, will go forth into every family generation after generation for your glory i pray for the fathers and mothers lord that they would take up this mental take up this baton of leading their families in the presence of god in the word of god in the power of god in the purpose of may x242 seven families arise and break up throughout this church in Jesus name amen deklarasi amsal pasal 16 ayat 20 amsal pasal 19 ayat 16 amsal pasal 30 ayat 5 Amsal pasal 16 ayat 20 Siapa memperhatikan firman akan mendapat kebaikan dan berbahagialah orang yang percaya kepada Tuhan Amsal pasal 19 ayat 16 Siapa berpegang pada perintah memelihara nyawanya tetapi siapa menghina firman akan mati Amsal pasal 30 ayat 5 Semua firman Allah adalah murni. Ia adalah perisai bagi orang-orang yang berlindung padanya. Saudara jemaat Tuhan, CST dimanapun kau berada, mari kini saatnya terimalah berkat yang daripada Tuhan. Kiranya Tuhan memberkati engkau dan menudungi engkau dengan kasih karunianya. Tuhan memberikan engkau kemenangan dan kasih karunia yang daripada Allah. Tuhan membawa engkau semakin naik dan bukan turun. Tuhan akan mengangkat kau menjadi kepala dan bukan ekor ketika engkau mengikuti perintahnya. Dan biarlah persekutuan dengan Allah Bapa Putra Roh Kudus akan menyertai setiap kita. Mulai hari ini sampai Maranatha Yesus datang kali kedua. Dalam nama Yesus, haleluya. Amin. God bless you.